I don't know what saint it was that said, a large family is a school of virtues. And I just love that. But if I could get that on a plaque on my wall, uh, it would be a great daily reminder. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Open Door Policy. I'm your co-host, Emily Mentock, and I'm joined today by... Father Patrick Gagno. Hello, Emily. How are you? I'm doing great, Father Patrick. What's new in your life? It's been a little bit. Okay. We always talk about the weather. We do. But really, I need to talk about the beauty of the water uh, here in Michigan especially Metro Detroit, we're always blessed with the proximity of the Detroit River, uh, the Saint, Lake St. Clair, or if you're up for a day trip out to Lake, Lake Michigan or Lake Huron. And so I get, this, I get this craving when the weather gets nice like this. I just need to get near the water, like sit by the water, pray, pray the rosary, go for a walk by the water, park by good old St. Paul's on the east side and go for a walk on Jefferson. So one thing that's new with me is I'm just uh, right now, in my prayer life, I'm in a season of just trying to spend a little more time by the water here and there and enjoy the Lord. And uh, yeah, Our Lady Star of the Sea. What's up with you, Emily? That's awesome, Father Patrick. I also just feel super drawn to the water. I was actually on a walk right before this episode to kind of give myself a little break between the work day and recording this. So I could feel a little more relaxed and casual. And I just, I also Mm -hmm. love walking with the water and the river was extra kind of choppy today. So the waves would splash up. And if you're walking on the edge, you could kind of feel some of the splash of things. It's definitely a great season for that. Now, this is not planned uh, that we're just casually shooting the breeze. And it is it is so today, though, that there are only a few parishes that I'm aware of in the Archdiocese of Detroit that are like right on the waterfront, St. Paul on the lake, and then St. Edward on the lake. And our awesome guest who we're going to get to uh, in just a few moments, uh, her parish is actually St. Edward on the lake. Isn't that neat how the spirit lines that up? It does. That's a great little alignment for us today. And for all people in South or in Southeast mm-hmm. Michigan, I think we all are drawn in that same way. And it'd be a great reminder. Thanks, Father Patrick, that we could go visit those uh, parishes and sort of experience the beauty of the water uh, in our visits to mass. And one of my favorite scriptures, John 7, 37, come to me, all you who are thirsty and from within you will flow life giving streams. And it's fun to be by the water and think, gosh, I've got something more magnificent that the rivers of living water through the Holy Spirit pouring out of me to the world around. And uh, yeah, I, thinking of the water, also thinking about the life-giving waters of baptism and then the gift of the Spirit that we have and how we truly get to pour that out on the world every day if we're open to it. It's a, it's a blessing to be by that beautiful natural reminder mm. of something that God has given us coming from landlocked Indiana. It's definitely a great gift to, that you guys get to experience up here in Detroit. Welcome friends to our episode on water as Catholics. We love yeah. the sacramental value of water. And just one more, my spiritual director, who's gone to the, gone to the Lord, Monsignor John Hall, former spiritual director. I still have, I have another one. Um, So he would call water, he would call it Adam's ale. You know, the whole Garden of Eden thing and like, what's your drink of choice? And he'd say, give me some Adam's ale, a nice (laughs) cool glass of water. Can't be beat, especially in the warm weather that we're getting into this summer. Yeah. Can't be beat. Amen. Well, hey, I think it's time to welcome Laura Sparling. I pitch it to you, Emily. Absolutely. Yeah. We're super excited to welcome um, Laura to the episode today. Um, A few fun facts about her. She has five kids and is married to an American hero. Hopefully we can get a little bit more into that story and learn more about her family once uh, we uh, begin speaking with her. And then also fun fact, her favorite movie is The Sound of Music. And she loves oldies music, which is great. It's a classic. I love those classic songs. Um, So without further ado, we welcome Laura. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us today, Laura. Laura. We're so happy to speak with you. So let's start by just learning maybe a little bit more about your family. So you have five kids. How old are they? I do. Uh, 11, nine, almost seven, two and a half, and then eight months. Wow. Congratulations. Thank God. Baby in the house. Yeah. They're they're awesome. And how long have you and your husband been married? Uh, Going on 12 years here in August. And you, uh, you called him your American hero. So congratulations. But can, can you, is there any more you could share about that story? Yeah. Um, sorry. I didn't really know that um, that was going to be, you know, I'm happy to share it, but he, yeah. 
he is an Iraq veteran, a veteran wow. in the Iraq war, mm-hmm. and he was actually injured in Iraq. Mm-hmm. And we met while he was recuperating, uh, following a below the leg wow. or below the knee, sorry, amputation. Yeah. So to me, I'm just so proud of him. And he's not in the military anymore, but he's mm-hmm. serving um, in the, I guess he's a prosecuting attorney for our county. So I feel like he's still in the public service. So I'm just so proud of him, but uh, yeah, he'd probably be a little um, blush if he heard me say that. We just (laughs) celebrated Independence Day. So it's a great reminder, just thankful for um, people like your husband who sacrificed so much. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) definitely. Um, Um, Laura, how beautiful that that you met your husband, um, Mr. Spiraling. You met him (laughs) while he was in rehab. And do you have... We're going to get in in this special NFP national fa- natural excuse me national <laughs> <laughs> natural family planning uh, week special episode uh, regarding natural family planning. Um, are you do you have a nursing background, Laura, or a medical field background? I do. I have a bachelor's degree in nursing from Eastern Michigan University, and I was a nurse uh, practicing for probably about five years before I decided to stay home after my third child, I decided to stay home. Uh, and then after my fourth, I kind of got into the Marquette method and teaching that. Wow. From How awesome that this call on your life, uh, this gift from the Lord to have a heart for medicine and a heart for people, caring for people, led you into your vocation with your husband and five beautiful children. And now you're helping other couples to be able to conceive by you know, getting the, the Marquette method of natural family planning down, that, that's, a, that's a good read of your situation, right? Yes, it Praise is. Praise God. Well, tell, mm-hmm. us, tell us more of your story. How did you become a joyful missionary disciple of Jesus? And how did he lead you to the Marquette method, the, the ministry that you're involved in now? Well, I actually wasn't raised Catholic. Uh, I was raised a Methodist. Um, And kind of when I got into college and started learning all the nursing uh, classes, all the anatomy and everything, I I kind of started to get really preoccupied with death and uh, started to really fear death. And it led me down a road of really searching for who God is. And and I I realized quickly that I wasn't in the, the right faith. You know, I wasn't mm. following the true faith. And I took a couple of years uh, off where mm-hmm. I wasn't going to church or anything, which I'm not proud of. But um, when I met my husband, he was in like the same exact boat. He had grown wow. up Baptist and he too felt like there's just something that wasn't clicking. It just nothing about, wow. you know, it just didn't make sense. So my dad ended up, uh, reverting to Catholicism. He was a cradle Catholic, but then uh, stopped practicing uh, at some point, but he became deep in the church again. And that kind of led us to the RCIA program together. Praise God. That's and were, awesome. Was that in, um, you know, the Southeast Michigan area? Did you guys grow up around um, like a St. Edward's parish that you're at now? Yeah, we grew up not too far from where we are now. We uh, we both grew up in I don't know if you know Clyde, Michigan, <laughs> but it's just uh-huh. it's just like a little small town uh, outside of Port Huron as well. But yeah, I I actually went we went to our CIA through Holy Trinity Parish in Port Huron. Wow! Uh, and while I was in nursing school, I stopped on my way home to Fort Gratiot one day and prayed at Father Solanus Casey's tomb. Wow. And I think he had a huge part in my Whoa. conversion for sure. That's awesome. Were there lots mm-hmm. of awesome discussions when you and your husband were going through RCI together? Like, you know, some aha yeah. moments that you were sharing together? Yes, absolutely. It was actually originally, it was just going to be me going through RCIA and so that we could get married in the church. He, mm-hmm. he was kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to become Catholic. Like I will raise our kids, you know, once we were engaged, she said, I'll raise our kids in the church, but I, I don't really want to go and convert. Mm. And so I started the classes and when I would 
talk to him about what we were learning. I mean, he maybe missed one or two classes and then he was like, I'm coming because he, it was just so, I don't know. It was just so profound. And so Mm -hmm. there was just so much richness to what we were learning that he wanted to convert as well. Praise God. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. Was there a particular thing that you were discussing or is just the richness of all of it? He's like, I need to go and hear more. I think it was a combination, but specifically Mm -hmm. transubstantiation and the biblical foundation of that. I mean, you just can't dispute it when you read, when you read the gospel. So it's just, it's like, this is it. You know, we found the true faith. So Wow. That's incredible. And you said that it would, um, so that you could get married in the church. So were you guys engaged at the time? We were, we were engaged and we were looking for a home, (laughs) you know, like a home as far as church goes, what, right. You know, we didn't know where we were going to get married because I had kind of left the Methodist faith and he left the Baptist faith. And we had, we had gone to some churches together, non-denominational and things. And it just, without my dad's influence, I mean, I probably never would have thought to even go to a Catholic church, which is sad because when you're Protestant, it's just, it's like another, you know, another world. Catholic church is like another world, I guess. With, uh, with the gift of, um, your father, uh, you know, it's uh, your testimony, Laura is, is such a, a great encouragement to parents out there who are listening that, um, their sons and daughters might, might not, you know, be, walking in, in any expressible way in Christian faith, but the, the encouragement that the, the seeds planted and the intercessory prayers of parents continue to be, to be mighty powerful. And I love your testimony. You know, like whenever somebody believes that Jesus is the Lord, that he died on the cross for them, that's, that is an incredible life-changing gift. And then when there's the more that, the gift of being able to believe, like you read John six and read the, Oh my gosh, like it really is his body. It really is his blood. And this will be the most important meal I eat every week. And with, as for uh, a couple, a married couple to be able to have that together, that's amazing that that was one of the most profound moments in RCA. And I got a good little segue point. Peter Kraft once said that the two places you'll see the most wonderful miracles are on the altar and in the womb on the altar, the gift of the Eucharist, and in the womb, the gift of human life. And got to ask you, Laura, you are a champion for natural family planning, the Marquette method. Please, we'd love to hear how the Lord led you into this ministry of helping people understand the Marquette method of natural family planning. Well, uh, I originally, when we had converted, uh, we didn't know in our marriage for like the first five years, we didn't know anything about NFP. I, we knew that Catholics weren't really supposed to use birth control, but we didn't really know what that meant, you know, entirely. And so we ended up moving out to Arizona for several years. And um, while well, my husband went to law school out there and we met a, another couple who just so lovingly shared the truth about NFP and well, God's plan for marriage in general. Uh, so we learned that we were kind of going about things in a wrong way. And, um, so that led me into learning more about fertility and, you know, learning your body signs and everything like that, and being a little more open to God's plan for our lives and our family than what I had originally envisioned. Um, but that definitely uh, led us into some tough times as well. So I don't want to mm. sugarcoat that. Sure. Uh, we became open to life again after our third child where we had kind of closed the doors and we had a miscarriage mm. and then a stillborn. And so I just like, that was another point in my life where I felt like my conversion shifted again and I deepened my faith. Wow. Uh, as hard as it was, that was the time in my life that I felt God's presence the most. Wow. Uh, and so even though it was the hardest thing I had ever been through, I still knew that I was following God's plan. Mm-hmm. And 
and growing in that way. And so after we were blessed with our fourth baby, uh, I wanted to learn about NFP so that I could share it with other people. Mm. I was going to say, so before that you had sort of, you had known about it um, and it was kind of applying it to your own life. But then after going through just that, those heartbreaking experiences and, um, but then as, assuming what you were practicing NFP, were you doing the Mark Heth method then as well for, for your fourth baby? Uh, yeah, I used the, the Marquette method to, to achieve the pregnancy there by, by pinpointing ovulation and all of that. Um, so it, it was a blessing in that, uh, respect, but I also, yeah, I wanted to learn more about it. And I, I just being a nurse and having that nursing background and just wanting to know everything about some, you know, wow. about a certain topic. Mm-hmm. I just, I found, actually I was looking for an instructor and I found the instructor training website and I just knew it was like a sign from God. So, wow. That's... Did you notice Laura, when you, when you began to embrace uh, natural family planning and start to practice it, did you notice uh, a change, uh, a sense of God's grace moving in your life and in your marriage in a new way? Absolutely. Uh, there have been graces given to us that I didn't know existed and mm. never in my life did I think I would have five kids and uh, uh, some people look at me a lot and they'll say things like, oh, I could never have that many kids. It's so much. I have two or three and I'm going crazy. And I just tell them I never thought I could either. But really when you are open to God's will, he really does give you all the, the gifts and the graces that you need to carry that out. That's a, that's a really great point because, you know, you mentioned earlier being open to life, which of course means being open to, you know, it's sort of the natural process of that, but really, but Mm -hmm. being open to life in the context of Catholic marriage means is being open Mm -hmm. to God's plan for your life and for your marriage and for your children's lives. It's not just, you know, sort of being open to life in the biological sense. Mm -hmm. Now as a nurse, Laura, I got to ask you to just like riff on, um, that, you know, the wisdom of God in the design of humanity and you as a nurse, like starting to study NFP, like what was that like for you? I mean, you probably already had an awe and a wonder of the gift of God's design of, of humanity, the body, like th- there's a design um, for you as a nurse, as you started to look into it, what was opening up for you? As a nurse, I felt just so fascinated by the way that babies are brought into the world and how miraculous it is even for a pregnancy to occur, uh, much less an unexpected one, which a lot of people experience, but it really is miraculous. And it's miraculous that that baby can grow for nine months. And then, uh, I mean, the whole, the whole design is just beautiful. Uh, and I, I enjoy studying all of it hundred percent. And did you find a new confidence in, you know, these, the, the gift of the way God has developed these systems, the reproductive organs, a new confidence once you study this to be able to not only for yourself and your husband to know when fertile and when not, and, but to really be able to coach others like this, that like God has given these secrets of nature to be discovered. Science is a gift from the Lord uh, when it's not abused. But did you get it, get like a new confidence in, in like, wow, I can help people do this. God can bring me people that are like trying to conceive and I can help them understand God's design of their body. Did you get like a new confidence in, you know, because of this discovery? Absolutely. I, I did not anticipate uh, the the spirituality aspect mm. of the teaching. And I am able to give people confidence, obviously, not 100%. It's 98.4% effective <laughs> if you're trying to avoid a pregnancy, yeah. which a lot of people are. Uh, you know, maybe they have had a C-section and they're trying to heal or they have a new baby and they're kind of just trying to get into a new routine and everything. And they just need some time to psychologically get back on their feet. And that's completely understandable. Uh, But I do have confidence in the method 
And like I tell people that that 1.6% chance of a, a pregnancy, that's, wow. that's God's, you know, segue into your life and leaving so. some room for, for the Holy spirit there. <laughs> exactly. What has it been like teaching other women as well? You know, you mentioned you, you discovered the Marquette method, you know, uh, maybe a bit later in life where I don't know if you had learned anything about natural family planning and your nursing studies before, but, um, I, I have a lot of Catholic friends who, you know, maybe didn't even encounter these options until adulthood who also, you know, grew up in, in the Catholic faith without, um, really either an awareness of church teaching about it, or even if they knew maybe the, the quote unquote rules didn't, weren't presented with other options for how to, um, either try to achieve or avoid pregnancy in their marriage through natural family planning. So what has it been like for you to, like you said, you wanted to dive into it to then share with other women, um, to share those truths with others as well. Teaching other women, other couples has really given me, it's given me just this beautiful purpose for my nursing degree because I hadn't Mm. been using it for so long. Uh, It felt like so long, but really it was just about five years, but Mm. I hadn't been using it. And now I'm using it to bring not only medical information to somebody, but God's design for marriage to people. And I've, I've taught people in the marriage prep classes who have strictly told me straight up, I don't want to take this class. I have to take it for <laughs> pre, you know, pre Right. And it's a requirement I don't want to, to do it. I don't want to chart wow. and I don't want to do all of this. And then down the road yeah. say, Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you've given us some things to think about. And it's just so amazing to be able mm-hmm. to sow those wow. seeds or plant those seeds. Uh, I've also had yeah. a couple who completely opened their life or their um, their marriage up to new life after learning everything that we teach in the Marquette method, mm. uh, all the church is teaching and everything that we kind of give people uh, a quick background lesson on. Uh, they've completely opened their lives back up to new children, even though their youngest was like 12 and they, they had wow. a 15 year old and a 12 year old or something like that. And uh, they decided, you know what, we, we've been missing out on uh, some of some of the beautiful gifts that God was trying to give us all along you know they were converts from hormonal birth control methods and everything and um, so it is like the most amazing thing to witness Mm. God using you or what you're teaching to to change other people's lives and to see probably both yeah. like the, the physical and spiritual sort of healing when you come, when you have a come into encounter with that truth. Um, I feel like it's been in the news a, a lot lately. It's just pe- pe- women, even in secular spaces, kind of pushing back against the effects of hormonal, hormonal birth control methods. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, so it's probably a lot of physical healing. I know that's even been in some, some of my own experience from things like that. And then mm-hmm. to go into also the spiritual healing of aligning your, your marriage and your life more fully with God's plan. Uh, what a beautiful mm-hmm. thing you must get to, to witness in your ministry in that way. It is beautiful, but I mean, there are struggles with it, uh, as well. So I don't want to mislead anybody. There's a lot of times where one or the other couple, sure. one or the other, the husband or the wife are fully on board with NFP and maybe the husband or the wife, the other does not want to practice that. Um, and so that's hard, uh, for me to watch because, um, I know how struggle, how much of a struggle that can be. Uh, my husband and I, we've Mm. grown at different times. So sometimes he would be ahead of me or vice versa. And sometimes it is a kind of a stressor on your marriage when you're not seeing a hundred percent eye to eye Mm. on things. And it's just a true opportunity to practice patience and prayer for your spouse and realize that even if they're not fully on board with you, that just your willingness to be there and pray for them. And when they're, when they come back, then you, you open your arms and welcome them. Glory. God is 
God is working an awesome ministry in you. And when I think of the word uh, ministry, it's to give, you know, we're, we're giving something from the Lord to others. And it's your, your nursing background, the medical background, and the spirituality, and your own personal history walking this journey is a powerful combination. And there's times we hear scriptures in a whole new way, like the Lord sheds a new light on that scripture. And I, I imagine you with these couples that, that sometimes, uh, you know, God, I thank God for his mercy that he meets us where we're at, loves us where we're at, and encourages us to come along. And when you're with a couple that's like one of them, I'm just here to fulfill the obligation. Uh, when you're in one of those situations and the words of Jesus, when he says in Matthew chapter four, verse 17, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, this is so awesome. Like you're carrying this message in your teaching of NFP that, you know, to repent is to have a change of mind. And the kingdom of heaven is at hand for couples that, for two disciples of Jesus that are about to become husband and wife, the kingdom of heaven is truly at hand at the heart of the sacrament of marriage. God will be the center of it. God, the author of life, will be the center of the marriage and have a change of mind about how you feel about what you think about fertility. And, you know, you are opening with this gift of seeing fertility as, as part of the gift that's given in the marriage act, opening up to the creative power of God. So your message, I, I just think it's so powerful when you're teaching on this. It really is a, have a change of mind. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The author of life is the center of your marriage and he can work wonders with your fertility. And by the way, it really helps the spirituality of your marriage when you make a full gift of yourself, uh, fertility included in, in every, every, you know, I've heard every marriage act because it's your body confirming your marriage vows saying again I do with everything I do I gotta ask you sorry I'm like a fire hose right now but where many people have heard of natural family planning Laura I think a lot of people myself included uh haven't heard uh until very recently the the Marquette natural family planning method so please tell us about that method well it is a uh, symptom hormonal indicator method so you look at hormones in urine samples, and then you determine when your most fertile time is based on that. Uh, also, you can add in other indicators like checking your temperature, looking at cervical mucus, uh, other hormonal tests that are kind of uh, extra, but that is basically the, the nuts and bolts of the Marquette method as far as what it is compared to others. And testing horm hormonal levels, I mean, that's very scientific. I think a lot of people who maybe aren't familiar with natural family planning might have some outside, you know, misconceptions about what it is and how truly, you know, rooted in science a lot of these methods are. And I know that with the Marquette method in particular and the testing, um, not just monitoring symptoms, it really is. Yeah, it's a lot more objective. And I think that gives a lot of people some confidence because especially people who are new to NFP or Maybe they are trying it after a trying the Marquette method after a different method didn't work for them or whatever. Uh, they they feel a little nervous trusting their own interpretation of things. So it's really nice to just have something that gives more of a cut and dry uh, answer to some of that. The Marquette method isn't always a hundred percent cut and dry, but that's where having an instructor really helps, and we help people through those difficult readings and those difficult cycle irregularities and things like that. Laura, I have to ask you, um, so having, having, uh, raising five children, I love the age range, uh, an eight month old baby in the house and then the oldest being 11. Um, and then also thank you for sharing with us about how a stillborn and also, um, the miscarriage you have two, two in heaven. So a mother of a mother of seven, um, have you, okay, a comment and a question. Uh, so I, I imagine you may have had, when you tell people, yeah, I got, you know, I'm raising five kids at home, you may have had a person or two look at you like, does, it, does this really work? <laughs> but then the, the question is like, I mean, from your heart as a mother who's been blessed with seven children, could you just speak from your heart about like the blessing that having a big family has been? Thank you for asking me that because I completely thought I was crazy, but sometimes I would start out my introduction like, yes, Marquette does work if you are here trying to avoid a pregnancy. And uh, we we were blessed with our children, but we we definitely 
tried for them too. Um, but yeah, so I always thought I was a little crazy mm -hmm. starting with that, but I thought, yeah, they probably look at me and think, I don't know if this works. Maybe we should get a teacher with like two kids. I don't know. So the, the children, that was something, another thing that I realized, uh, when, when I had that stillborn, um, I realized God kind of gave me this moment of almost like heaven when I was holding that mm. baby that, wow. you know, I wasn't going to get to take home. Um, yeah. And I realized yeah. that everything that I look at in my life as important um, is really a lot of materialistic reasons uh, for living. And, and I just realized that the most important thing are for me, my children, um, my family, uh, mm -hmm. because yeah. a new soul is someone, something you can take to mm -hmm. heaven with you when you die, or maybe not when I die, but hopefully mm -hmm. after I die, but uh, you get the picture. So yeah. I just, it really changed my perspective on children. And uh, when I realized that the reasons that were holding me back from having more children were mainly selfish reasons. And uh, every once in a while, don't get me wrong, I'm still like missing that life where I only had a couple of kids and we could do this or that and go on more <laughs> dates and people would actually babysit our kids without probably wincing. And <laughs> um, the <laughs> army got too powerful. So I, <laughs> It has been the most, the biggest blessing and the, the younger children watching them love on the baby, the baby siblings and everything that has been so beautiful just to watch a new baby come into the house through the eyes of the little children. And it just really makes me yeah. grateful um, that God revealed that to me because it wasn't something that I had always wow. known, I guess. So wow. Thank you for sharing it. That's incredible. My a, a doctor of the domestic church. There's the doctors of the church, but then there's a doctor of the domestic church I grew up in, my mom. Um, so a very wise woman. She <laughs> said uh she conceived eight children and we uh, one was a stillborn uh, my brother Robert Saint Robert. I you know, he's not officially canonized, but come on, he's a saint. And uh so she she says uh, um after 3 just keep going. Like the older ones will start to help with the younger ones. And it really does lighten the load. And it sounds like, you know, that's, that's been your experience to some degree too. It has. And I don't know what saint it was that said a large family is a school of virtues. And I just love that. I don't know who said it and I've tried to Google mm -hmm. it, but someone wow. said it to me before and I forget what saint they said it was. <laughs> But if I could get that on a plaque on my wall, uh, it would be a great daily reminder. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that, Laura. And I think this, you know, we were releasing this episode for uh, National Natural Family Planning Awareness Week. And I think that just your testimony here on this episode has been a great gift to, yeah. to awareness, to people being open to it. Um, as you just continue your ministry, a question we like to ask people on the podcast is what is their dream? Um, mm. So we would love to hear either, you know, whether it's for your yeah. family or in your ministry, what is it, what is your dream um, for Laura Sparling right now? Yeah. My dream is to continue raising my large family um, and possibly welcoming more. Hopefully, if my husband hears that, he doesn't faint. <laughs> um, and, and having them all leave our house, knowing the faith mm. in and out and knowing who they are in Christ and sharing that with others. And as far as the business, uh, the NFP business goes, I am so happy with how busy I have been with Whole Mission and how many opportunities they mm. have given me to meet other people. Yeah. Uh, they do all the business side of the teaching. Mm. So that has been a huge load off of me. And I get to just log on and uh, share the Marquette method with people. So uh, I don't really... I would love to just continue teaching it the way I have been because 
it's been so fruitful for me and I think for others, I yeah. hope, but. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And on that, if people want to, if um, women or men listening to this episode wanted to learn more about the Marquette method or how to get in touch with you or someone like you um, to, to learn more about that, where can they go to find information about whole mission? They can go to their website, which is www.mmnfp. So think.com, sorry. So think Marquette method of nfp.com. So mmnfp.com. Thank you. And then I guess just maybe one last question, but, and then yeah. maybe Father um, Patrick can close us with a blessing mm. for na- Natural Family Planning Week. Mm. Um, but what would you say to you know women, even maybe un- unmarried women who might mm. be discerning the vocation of marriage, who want to learn more about um, their own fertility, want to get started on family planning, or even married women or men who might hear this, um, what would you want them to know if they're not practicing NFP right now, um, different joyful missionary disciples, what would you want them to know about it for this awareness week? Really, the earlier you can start becoming aware of your fertility signs, the better. And so if you're not married, it still is beneficial to know when you are fertile and all of that. And you can carry that information with you into your marriage. Also, it's great for figuring out health issues that may be going on. So even if even if you don't want to get married and you want to join a convent or something, it's still beneficial Mm -hmm. as, as a health marker, uh, to track your fertility signs. Um, and I would also just say, if it sounds scary, uh, don't be afraid and just to trust in God because he really will not leave you alone and he will walk you through every step of the way. Laura, uh, you honored your husband earlier and rightfully so as he's, uh, served, uh, our country uh, beautifully uh, and sacrificing for our country in the, in the, was the army you say an army mm-hmm. veteran yes yeah and uh and a, a, a really a hero um and you know your what you do uh on one hand raising raising five children heroic but also um a, a here a hero helps protect people helps to save people and Jeremiah 29, 11 is a famous passage where God says to the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have in store for you, plans for your welfare, a future full of hope. And there are people that God is touching through you. You're a treasure to the church, a treasure to the world. People that God is touching through you that the enemy's trying to block God's plans. And by being able to offer this light, this truth about fertility and natural family planning and the spirituality that opens people up to God, the creator and his plans for their life. There are lives that, that are coming into being because people have opened up and said yes to God's creative will. And I believe you're going to have a day one time, Laura, uh, in the kingdom of heaven where somebody comes up to you and says, hey, part of the reason I'm here is because you helped my parents be open to life. Thanks a lot. So, Laura, thank you for what you do. And friends, please check out uh, the Marquette Natural Family Planning Method and natural family planning in general. And don't be scared to take a risk and, uh, and you know, send a message, a, an email or a text to, you know, if you know some family that are recently married and stuff and just always offer it in humility and in love. Um, you never know who might, you know, behind closed doors might need that, that little encouragement from the Lord to be open for life, um, to life. Hey, Emily, I feel like I should pitch it to you for the prayer. And I'll just put a blessing at the end because I talk too much. Back to Emily Montal. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we'll close in prayer. Thank you so much, Father Patrick. Thank you, Laura, um, for being generous with your time coming on the podcast um, to talk about um, the Marquette Method during this Natural Family Planning Week. It's been such a gift to all listeners. Um, and we uh, wish you all the best uh, that the Lord oh, yeah. may bless you in your ministry and in your family. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll just open in prayer in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, give you thanks for Laura and Father Patrick and our producer, Ron, for bringing us together for this podcast episode. Um, We give you thanks for all the ways that you blessed us in the recording of this episode and um, led us with your spirit to just share the the truth of the way you have designed our bodies and our marriages uh, to give you greater glory through the gift of children and natural family planning. Um, We ask that you continue to bless Laura, her family, her clients, and her ministry um, and all that she does, and as well as 
calls all joyful missionary disciples here in the Archdiocese of Detroit and those who are on the path to becoming joyful missionary disciples, um, especially anyone who might discover you and encounter your son, Jesus, through natural, the truth of natural family planning. And I ask that Father Patrick close us in a blessing. And may Almighty God bless every listener, your family, your friends, your desires. May God bless you beyond all you could ask or imagine with the grace pouring out in this blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to another episode of Open Door Policy, where we hear stories of different joyful missionary disciples in Southeast Michigan and how they encounter, grow, and witness in their love for Christ. You can find more episodes at unleashthegospel.org forward slash podcast or on Spotify, Google, Apple, or anywhere you get your podcasts. See you next time.